And good morning from the scene at New York Studios. It is time for the 359 Podcast, episode 291. I'm BVG. And in the house today, we've got Ben Fox, Ruben Alferding, and David Katzmeyer. David Katzmeyer, thank you very How much for being here. D. Yep, I, I came all the way from my desk, about 10 feet away. Howdly doodly. Hi, hikely doodly doodly dongle. <laughs> So you can already tell it's going to be a good show today, guys. It's going to be a great show. We're going to talk mostly about TV stuff, Yay. which is, David, why you're here. Uh, so we're going to be talking about the Amazon Fire TV, which was just announced yesterday, and also the NVIDIA Shield. There's a new integration with Home Assistant that was, sorry, Google Assistant that was announced this morning. Yep. Uh, send in as many questions and comments as you want about all things TV, whether they streaming boxes, what TV I should buy, whatever. David can literally answer every single one of them. I have no doubt in my mind about that. Talking into your television, the living room. You know what, this reminds me, I was looking up, I did a report years ago, 2013, on the first Samsung Smart Interaction Television. I don't know if you remember this, you could wave at it, you could talk into thin air, what? and now, now, you can do that and it actually works. But the are any of them ever gonna be as smart as the TV on Pee Wee's Playhouse? Never. No. Yes. Fine, screw them. Yeah. All right, let's save it for the podcast. Let's get moving on that. Send in your questions and comments, BBG, will We'll get to as many as you can at the end of the show. Let's do this thing. All right. We'll be recording the audio podcast. I'm back to talk to you in the chat. Drum up some good questions today. We could use them. Three minutes and 59 <laughs> seconds from three, two. Welcome to the 359. I'm Ben Fox Ribbon. I'm Alfred Ng. And with us today is David Cats in the Cradle, Cats Meyer, pound for pound, the premier guru on all things TV. Oh, yeah. I brought my Barney <laughs> shirt today. I'm, re I'm ready to sing it. Okay. So there's a lot of news in just the past 24 hours about the colliding worlds of video streaming devices and voice assistants. Let's start with the Amazon new Fire TV. It's $70. It's got a weird shape, and it now supports 4K HDR video. Don't yes. shape shame, dude. Yeah. It's, it's square, okay, man. Fine. It's totally square. Square is the new round. Um, and it you hangs off so. the back of your TV. It's a phrase in the technology industry we call it dongle and it you know is just like a chromecast except it does 4k hdr just like a chromecast ultra which costs the same um the difference is this one has a remote and uh it's it's a pr seems like a pretty sweet deal for a 4k hdr streamer yeah there was a bundle that i think just got announced either yesterday or today where you could get it with an echo dot for how much 80 bucks another 10 bucks step up and get it. it's another dot what are you gonna do you're gonna need another dot in the garage you can use one in the bathroom you or know. you can use it in the living room yes. to talk to the fire tv yes so this is something that uh amazon actually rolled out last month uh the finally after years of having to hold up the microphone and and talk into it like you're in walkie talkie style in the mid 80s you can say hey alexa into a room and if you have a uh, echo dot or any other Echo device, uh, always on, always listening, it will control your television. You can say, uh, watch Manchester by the Sea, which works great because it's an Amazon property, or <laughs> watch Stranger Things, which doesn't work quite as well because it's Netflix, but you get the idea. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, we, I give it a full run through uh, on CNET, and it's, it's, it's great. So now all the Fire TV devices work like that, including the new 4K HDR one and the $40 stick, which it remains in the line. One of the things that we were hoping to see yesterday was an integrated product where it was basically an Echo Dot plus a Fire TV mashed together. Yeah. Were you a little disappointed that didn't happen? Darn it. Well, that was in the leak. It was a cube thing. It had buttons on the top. You know, so again, the idea was you had all this functionality in one device. Now with this bundle, you know, it's 80 bucks. I can't imagine this cube would be that much, you know, more exp or less expensive than that. So I think the cube is, exists. You think the, the cube, cube exists? is somewhere. I'm kind of anti-cube at this point. I feel like if you can get a dot and a, and a little, you know, dangling uh, stick thingy that, that does everything that the cube does, you don't need a cube. What if the cube is like cheaper than both of those combined though? I'll if, hail the cube. If, if, if so, that would blow my mind. Um, but you know, it's Amazon. They're, they're, they're good at cutting prices, those guys at Amazon. Aren't Definitely. They? You mentioned in your story, too, that the Fire TV, like a new Fire TV box, may mm -hmm. be on the way. They may have that, have that up their sleeve, so maybe the Cube will be coming. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thing is the competitive landscape. So Roku still hasn't, by the way, those guys had a pretty successful IPO, from what I understand. Um, 
they have uh, something that they're probably going to release at some point in the near future, like they always do every fall. And, and last year, they still make my favorite 4K HDR streamer. So they're the biggest uh, fish in the streaming uh, you know, uh, stream <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> and we're so, expecting to see Google next yeah, week. Yeah, exactly. We might get another Chromecast. So you know, stuff is still happening in this space. We obviously saw uh, the Apple TV 4K recently, which is in a stratospheric price point compared to all these other guys. Uh, let's move on to NVIDIA Shield. So they got... They became the first TV device to get Google Assistant. You had a chance to play with this. What were you, what was your experience? How good was it? It was okay. It was okay. Google. You weren't blown away. Um, yeah, it, it was. It was one of these things where it was a very similar. Sorry, uh, to the Alexa. You know, it's saying into thin air, similar sort of functionality. Um, the the downside is that you got to use it. It's, the Nvidia Shield is basically a streaming gaming uh, mega box for geeks. It's about two hundred bucks. You can get one for one eighty, but it doesn't you know, work out of the box with this functionality. The idea is, is the game controller has a far field mic in it. So if you want to, you know, say these things into thin air without holding a remote, you got to leave your game controller sitting on the table. Um, kind of a kludge. Uh, at CES, <laughs> they announced this thing that was like a little like Glade air freshener that plugs in and, and has a far field mic and a, and a speaker in it that is called the NVIDIA Spot, much like what Amazon announced. Um, and But they didn't give a pricing availability on that. So maybe they'll make the system better. But the point is Google Assistant gives you all that great Google Assistant stuff you have on your phone already uh, and the Google Home speaker. But now it's built into this game box. We're going to see more stuff soon. Sony TVs will also have Google Assistant. So, uh, you know, that's it's another thing you talk to in the living room. Sounds great. All right. If you want to read more about these stories, check us out on CNET. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. I'm Alfred Ng. And David, David Katzmeyer. Damn it. <laughs> something wrong, David? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when it comes to talking... I'm not editing that out. For I, the I, tend, I tend to talk. Damn it. You, you guys, you guys have That's heard actually me. our new outro. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> I messed up again. <laughs> so stupid. Never, God, David, never, why did you say that? Never thought the 359 would have a post credits bonus. What is this, Marvel? <laughs> Wouldn't it be great? The next Spider Man movie just rolls credits and then you just hear Tom Holland. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty solid. Um, one of the questions, this is like the big think question I wanted to get to, David, about this was, where do you see all this going? Just kind of like to wrap up everything that we talked about on the pad podcast in, in a little bow. Um, where is this going? I think it's a couple going years on the TV, isn't it? Like integrated yeah, into the television? into the television. Right, right. So yeah. that's one issue right now. So you got about these <laughs> right? things that, you know, will work uh, only by plugging them in. What you want is them integrated into the television. Yeah, so, I think that's what I was getting at. Yeah, so you want a TV that has all this stuff built into it already. And, you know, we saw that, uh, uh, like, you know, years ago with Samsung. They made an attempt and it failed miserably and they stopped doing it. But, for example, these Sony TVs uh, with uh, Android operating system are going to get Google Assistant. Um, I was really surprised when Amazon's Fire TV that came out earlier this year, it's made by a company called Element, um, didn't have far field mics built in because that seems like a pretty obvious thing to do, you know, just just build it all into the same, uh, you know, TV. Um, so I think that's probably coming next year. What about um, being able to upgrade, right? Like it, it's easier to upgrade an Echo Dot than to upgrade your television. So is there a value to having those things be separate? I think so, but I also feel like, you know, what what was an upgraded Echo Dot give you? You know what I mean? Like, it, it kind of does a pretty great job already. I mean, I'm sure Amazon can answer that question by saying, oh, better Sonics and no volume control, I mean, that whatever. And like, how often do you replace your TV anyway? Yeah, it's it's not that yeah. often. Yeah, that's the, that's the point is that if Amazon does at some point come out with, um, you know, some sort of improved Alexa controls, you're 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 less likely to update your your television because it's hundreds of dollars as opposed to one of one of those Alexa Yeah, the devices. only thing that makes me lean towards getting a, a TV with like a Google Assistant as opposed to an Echo even though I have like a ton of Echoes in my home is that it doesn't play well with YouTube whereas you know Home Assistant does. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's like I watch most of my content on YouTube so yeah. especially like live streams of great podcasts like um, the 359. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know you were going there. That's I can't. I can't think of any other ones. But the Apple Byte, <laughs> the 404. <laughs> that's right. Oh yeah. Net picks. Yeah. I think. I think the last tremendous selection from CNET. Last 404, I think, is tomorrow. So check it out, people. Is Ooh. it? Yeah, wow. I believe so. And mm. I think they may be doing a marathon. So check it out, sweet fellow 404 fans. Yeah. 
way to break the sad news. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's But it, we're still going happening. strong, and we'll be here every day. It's yeah. not our last episode? Uh, it might be. This okay. was actually a pretty solid one, so it would be pretty great to end on this Just note. Just throw more damn it in there. And we'll... <laughs> damn it. All right, let's jump into some questions. Tammy Thompson's got a good one. Do you think Amazon is just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks yes, with all the announced products? And why is there such a push for voice control? Yes, on the first part. Absolutely. They're just trying to like push the envelope, test out what's actually possible in the smart home and see what actually sells. It seems pretty likely to me that some of these devices that they have in the Echo line are not going to succeed or are going to sell very poorly, but they are hopefully trying to find the next Echo Dot. That's their big seller in the Echo line. Then they probably point. should have yeah. made the prices much lower. Yeah, they could have. Oh, wait for Prime Day. Right. As um, far as the big push for voice, I mean, like, maybe you can answer that yeah. related to TVs at least. It, it, the thing about a TV is that it's just a pain in the butt. You got a bunch of remotes. There's a bunch of buttons on them. It's so much easier to just say, you know, watch Stranger Things or whatever. Um, they, uh, and that's been the dream. And now they're really, I think, very close to making that a reality. And, and we were talking before, like, with YouTube, for example, it comes down to these guys playing nice with each other. And Google mm -hmm. and Amazon are not good friends, and Apple's not good friends. All these guys are kind of uh, trying to compete against each other, but also offer each other services. And the differences between the devices come down to what you want to watch. I mean, if you have a bunch of Prime stuff, you, you bought a lot of stuff on Amazon, um, you know, the Fire TV ecosystem is great. It's it, it Stuff comes up, you know, immediately on Amazon. And same thing with um, Apple when, you know, you buy a bunch of stuff on iTunes and their HomePod speaker might integrate this Farfield Voice stuff when it comes out later this December. So I would, I would expect that. Yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, all these guys are, again, fighting for the same sort of uh, um, turf that they did with phones. And except there's a new player, Amazon, that doesn't have a phone, and they're the leader. So I think it makes it pretty cool to see them, uh, see their, their, their dynamics play out and which ones, you know, what services they play nice with. And I think the winner, hopefully, is one that will, you know, play nice with everybody and let you watch what you want to watch with your voice. Right. Uh, and you know, not only watch, yeah, looking at it more broadly, I totally agree that it is a land grab in voice computing that we're seeing right now. And it's more broad than just watching. Yep. Like what you want to watch how you want to shop, how you get your information, what you ping to like just ask any sort of like trivia, weather, whatever. Yeah. And that's why you're seeing so much activity going on right now because this is the this is the next big land grab along yeah. with some other stuff, but this is a big one. Has all the voice command stuff though like for TV at least been only for like oh like watch Netflix like web services like could i tell it to like change the channel to like espn or something like yeah that? Okay. so for on the amazon tv for example it's integrated an antenna you could say watch cbs for example and it would come <laughs> up immediately and um you know that's the welcome antenna. to the pander 59 <laughs> that's the antenna uh you know a feed of cbs and it, it works great um but the other thing you know that, i really love the late show i think it's really interesting that you know you bring up the whole stuff that's not watching tv but it's still on your tv and that's where the google assistant they have a, a pretty cool uh promo ad that they put out at the same time as this shield uh update rolled out where it's basically just a guy like he'll watch game of thrones and he'll be like oh who's that actress and since it's google assistant knows you're watching game of thrones it'll, it'll come up with daenerys the actress and then it'll be like oh how tall is she and it'll be like oh five three and yeah oh, where can i get that dress and then you'll be like you know it's it's Wait, that this, was an ad of theirs yeah yeah, yeah. and it's, who it's, watches it's, tv like that well that's what they're they're saying it's like <laughs> moms you, if who you're asks, how tall is she if you're in, i want to know how tall denarius is <laughs> absolutely and if you're in five three by the way and if you're in this mode of like oh tv i just going to use it to lead me down the rabbit hole of distraction into other areas uh you know the the living room assistants will help you with that and sell you some uh you know some dresses on the way yeah, I, I obviously people already use their phones and laptops that way. Why yeah. not the television? Yeah, it'll be fun. Time for some more questions. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've got Kevin in the chat. It says, uh, "When will there be a Google Assistant update for Sony TVs?" Ooh, great question, Kevin. Uh, Google says a uh, couple of months. Um, we'll see. I'm curious to know what they're going to do with Farfield again because they just have these microphones in their uh, remote controls. And I don't know if they're going to, you know, you're going to have to leave that on the table and talk loudly into it um, from afar. Or maybe they'll do what Amazon did, which is the smart thing, and have a, a Google Home speaker uh, be able to listen all the time and control your television. And right now, NVIDIA Shield can't do that. So a couple months on the Sony thing. They're the only other Android TV operating system, so they're going to be probably the next to get Google Assistant uh, in terms of the, the TV entertainment space. I wish these remote controls with mics had, like, a, a search function on them where, like, when you lose your remote, you can just yell out, like, 
Oh, oh that would be you do wish that, do you? And then it'd ping, and then you can go and just like grab it. That's a great idea. Do they me, do that? Let me think. Uh, Roku has had that on their devices for a while, and it's it's a button. You just press the button on the box, and the remote will play, uh, you know, a ping or Ride of the Valkyries or whatever you want to. Oh my God! I love that's that. not that's not voice controlled though. No, no yeah, you have to get up Kill and the push web. the button. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you know, it's it's but it's there. And I, I, I love that idea. I was asking yeah. like Logitech, the, the Harmony remote guys, like, why don't you have this? I freaking lose this thing all the time. But you know. Yeah, but what if you lose the box? Then what? <laughs> right. <laughs> then you're screwed. <laughs> Then, then you Roku need to will sell you a new life. one okay, for fifty bucks. What if you bucks. lose the TV? What if How do you I walk in? <laughs> TV. What button do I Where push? Where are then? you, <laughs> uh, David? Alex in the chat is looking to buy a new TV around fifty-five inches. What do you recommend and why? Great question for David. Big TCL P series. Say again now. TCL P series, six hundred bucks. Uh, best fifty-five inch TV I have seen this year. Uh, bang for the buck. Uh, it's a Roku TV. I've mentioned Roku a few times. It's a great operating system, but it's also 4K, HDR, Dolby Vision, great picture quality, local dimming, yada yada, and it's 600 bucks. Holy crap. Does it have voice control? Uh, if you plug an Amazon Fire TV stick into it. <laughs> so I don't really get sorta. like the whole like voice control for TV thing. I mean, I don't know. I also don't watch TV that much, so maybe that's me. It's um, remotes have become complicated and yeah, but I annoying. use my phone as a remote. So the idea is still you yeah. put your phone in your pocket, and you, instead of saying you know cute cat videos on YouTube or whatever you're watching, Alfred, you can say that into thin air, and your cute cat videos will pop right up. All yeah. right, yeah. yeah, arguably it's supposed to make things easier, but I think at this point we're still bridging and transitioning into things getting a little bit more complicated sometimes. As they keep adding more integrations, more controls, different things that you can do. Yeah, and it, it you know, the, the litmus is always like, you know, can my six year old use it? And the, the answer is, y they might if they're going to watch the right thing, but mm -hmm. they'll generally get frustrated because PBS Kids isn't supported or whatever, you know. So you're in that weird area where a lot of stuff doesn't work. Yep. So we have a follow up question, and unfortunately, we don't have Ty Pendleberry here, but do you have any perspective on soundbars for James? Do I have perspective on soundbars? Uh, yeah, the best soundbar right now is a Vizio. I can't give you the brand, but it kicked all the others' butts. I feel like it's 150. I'm sure if you um, search for Ty's article, he's got it covered. Yeah, it's on the top of the best soundbars list. Just Google that on CNET, and uh, it's it's right there. It's it's a from what I understand, it's his it's his world beater right now. Nicholas is calling you out. Alfred says you're Mr. Grumpy Pants. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, like that's why he's here. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, all right, so on related news, Matthew Datcher. What's up, Datch? Hey, Datch. I have a very serious question. Who is older, Alfred Ng or CNET as a company? I ask because I was just thinking about watching Richard Hart host CNET Central when I was in high school. Um, mm. I actually was thinking about this the other day because I was um, speaking of our general manager uh, over coffee. So CNET's what, like 24 now? No. 20... I think it's like 22. 22? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'm like, I'm like a year older. Yeah. I thought you were born on the same day that CNET was. I thought that was... Can you stop? Like, I'm trying to lie about my age on the show, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he was the chosen one. I am. I am so net. <laughs> he was destined to be The golden hired. boy. I the been, red ball boy, if I've you will. I've been raised around this office for years. Yeah. I mean, I'm somewhat terrified they even asked the chat how old they think I am, but, you know. 76. Think, 76. I think CNET's older than you, right? CNET is not older than me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Stop lying about your age, dude. All right, fine, fair enough. I'm a, I'm 18. <laughs> All right, another I one. I drew this beard. Another one from Datch, real quick. Is there an Alexa compatible Keurig so I can voice order my uh, Earl Grey tea hot? Mm, maybe. Sure, why not? That is possible. They have like a thousand products that integrate with Alexa. Keurig might be one of them. I'm not really. Or you sure. could just put your Keurig on a smart switch and you know. Kind you of could definitely it up do that, that way. Yeah. yeah. Um. There, since we're plug in a lot of CNET uh, stuff. We, we do have a whole smart home page that you can see the different Alexa and Google Assistant integration. So I would say check that out and you'll be able to see a lot of the different devices that work with those specific voice assistants. And they cover the heck out of coffee in that mm -hmm. smart home office. Oh, yeah. That yeah. and bourbon. And, and like sous vide. Oh, yeah. Whatever a oh, sous vide seriously. is. If, if you need to stir some water to cook your meat, they, they're your boys. <laughs> also, Showtime is a great channel. Oh, is it? I, I, I figured I, I just want to I complete love, the circle. Of I love plugs. Homeland. <laughs> Wait, is that still on? 
I'd just like to say that I think Roger Chang is an amazing <laughs> uh, editor and person. I mean, for someone who's 23, he's, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, absolutely. It's great taste. All right, a couple more quick ones before we call the day. Tammy uh, has another good question. Uh, there, uh, there are cheaper Alexa-enabled speakers like the uh, Eufy Genie. I'm not sure if I'm hmm. pronouncing that right, or the Fabrique speakers uh, that currently do the same thing as Echo without the multi-room features. Mm -hmm. Will they be worth purchasing instead? The mm. multi-room features are definitely very useful. Talking to Ry Christ, who's uh, he's the a smart home guru uh, out in Kentucky that I talk to a lot about Alexa uh, integrations. He mentions that there are a handful of devices that do provide a lot of those Alexa features, but do not have the multi-room capabilities. And so you, you'll ask Alexa to do something and multiple devices are actually going to answer. That can be really, really annoying. So um, I think Amazon is obviously trying to protect um, its ability to continue to sell you um, its own line of Echo devices to a certain extent, my or, yeah. or you're going to see this, that stuff also roll out to those devices as well. From my experience, though, the multi-room feature has really not been that great. It doesn't work with Spotify for mm -hmm. me. I mean, I'm sure they're going to be adding that feature soon, and it also doesn't work if it's on Bluetooth speakers. Like, it's only if it's the Echo on its own, mm -hmm. or if it's, like, plugged in into, like, another set of speakers, and all my Echoes are, plugged, are like, connected to Bluetooth speakers. So it does not work that well, like right now. I yeah, so. multi-room is hard. I yeah. mean, it's about syncing like yeah. party mode throughout your whole house, <laughs> and it took Sonos a while to perfect it. And and actually now the um, the Google uh, the Chromecast audio is really good at mm -hmm. it. You know, so. that's the thing too. The the multi-room syncing, from my experience, has been like one or two seconds off sometimes. Yep. And like I really only play the radio yeah. on it because like what else can I do with it right now? Yeah. And you yeah. can hear that. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, they it's like it right. walking into the past when I go into my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> One second earlier. <laughs> Wait, I know about traffic already. <laughs> All right. Let's get off topic for one hot second. Danny Green is wandering around hey, the Danny. Apple store. Danny, what, uh, what would, what should Danny buy? What? The store. <laughs> <laughs> buy Apple. T shirt. Stock. I don't know. What, what do you Beats buy headphones. Um, not the iPhone 8 if you have any iPhones from the past two or three years. Woof. Yeah. Well, if you, you, could, you could just hang out until the iPhone X comes out. Yeah, you just, know, go, on their, just, just go on their computers and loiter there for the rest of the day. I've done that. It's, month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just get a, um, uh, Danny, get a uh, MacBook Pro with a touch bar. Yep. Put it in a box, send it over to me. Danny, yeah. go on Check all the computers and then go on um, our video, like on all of their computers. So yes. That, like just boost our viewers. <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> actually, there you go. That's a great tactic. <laughs> Do that. Log that's in a solid all of idea. Them right now. <laughs> all right. Before we go, uh, let's get David under the uh, microscope here. Alex says Chromecast, Fire TV, or Roku? Roku. At least so far, an easy one. I will be able to answer that in more depth and detail once the uh, Roku and or uh, Chromecast announcements come later this month. I'm thinking, but you know, right now it's Roku. Good enough. I think that's about the right place to end it off for the week. Been a good week, fun week. Yeah. Not not filled with Samsung and Apple and the same redundant stuff over and yeah, over. Yeah, you should I'm watch shocked. our show on Monday. It's incredible. What was that? The Equifax show? No, that was the one that didn't exist. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. It was so good. We it was so to good it. it didn't happen. But, yeah, been, David, thanks for coming on. Yes, and, uh, yeah, let's bring us home. The 359 is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, FeedBurner, Google Play Music, and, of course. CNET.com. I'm tired of plugging this website. All right. Well, and we showtime. work for it. And Showtime. No, no, no. We're not on Showtime. We're not on not Showtime. Yet, anyway. Not, not yet. yet. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Thanks, and thanks to David for joining us.